Hello and welcome everyone to the Delmar Show. If you've been a viewer of my show for the longest time, you may remember that I did two videos particularly called Original Against Remakes. It's a basic concept. All it is, I take the original version of a game and compare it to its remake to see which one I prefer. I only did two of these type of videos. One on Star Fox 64 Against the Remake and then DuckTales on the original NES with DuckTales Remastered. Even though it was fun making those videos, granted the uh, original against remake on Star Fox 64 isn't that great anymore, it was pretty fun but over time I haven't really made a new one as there's been so many people that have done comparison videos on original games with its remakes and plus I don't have too many remake games that I feel justified to make a whole video on it. But today is a special exception as I'm a huge fan of the original PlayStation 2 trilogy of this franchise and I love the characters and I really love the remake as well so I figured for all time's sake let's just go ahead and do another original against remake this time with Ratchet and Clank on the PlayStation 2 and Ratchet and Clank on the PlayStation 4 the game based on the movie based on the game but before I talk about the differences between each game I'm just gonna go a little backstory real quick Regarding the original PlayStation 2 trilogy, it's by far one of my favorite trilogies on the PlayStation 2. Don't get me wrong, I love the Sly Cooper and Jack and Daxter trilogies, but in my opinion, the Ratchet and Clank trilogy on the original PS2 is just remarkable. I love the gameplay, the characters, the weapons that you can use, the tight level designs. Everything about the games are great. Now granted, I haven't played every single Ratchet and Clank game. I've played um, future Tools of Destruction and Quest for Booty, but that's about it. I played these original games so much, especially the original PlayStation 2 version of Ratchet and Clank. While it is a bit slower paced and a tad bit different compared to Gun Commando and Up Your Arsenal, I still think this game is amazing. It's remarkable of how well it's aged. And it's probably one of my personal favorite PS2 games on the system. And two years ago, we got a remake of the original PlayStation 2 game. But this one is more based on the movie that came out of the same name. Now the movie itself, I'm not going to dive too much into it. As the PS4 version follows the movie pretty well. But the movie itself, I really enjoyed. I remember me and my brother and two of our good friends getting together and going and seeing it in the theaters. And we absolutely loved it. And it was also funny too, considering we were the only four people in the theater. For good reason too, this film did pathetically at the box office. I don't have any issues with the movie per se. I think the movie is one of the best, well heck, the best video game adaptation movie because all the other video game adaptations are poor to say. But I think the one thing I wish they would have done is to not have this film in theaters. It should have been a PlayStation Store exclusive or an exclusive to like if you pre-order the game you get a bonus disc with the movie or something. Not a film that should be broadcast in theaters as movie critics and audiences aren't familiar with the games as much as people who love the games. But I think the movie is still great. Definitely, wow that is really shiny there. I, I think you should definitely check out the movie if you have to. I think it's really great especially if you love the PlayStation originals and so on. The remake itself I think is spectacular. It still follows the movie good and while it still holds the heart and passion of the original PS2 game, I think is an amazing reimagining of it. But which one is better? It's gotta be kinda hard to say but let's go ahead and get into it. A defective robot, Clank, escapes from a robot factory and lands on the home planet of a Lombax named Ratchet. The robot reveals that he is on a mission to stop Chairman Drek, who plans to construct a brand new world for his race to blog. By harvesting each planet to form this new one, Ratchet and Clank join forces to stop Chairman Drek and goes across many different planets and comes across many different characters, including Captain Quark, the most popular superhero in the galaxy, Big Al, a robot mechanic, Skick McMarks, Helga, and of course the best character of all video games, the plumber. Look, plumber's crack. What did you just say? I said, look, the plumber's back. The reimagining has the same plot as well, but with a few major changes. For one, the narrative is a little bit different. 
Captain Quark is the leader of the Galactic Rangers, a team who protects the galaxy from many threats. Ratchet lives and works at his adoptive father's workshop, and Chairman Drek is accompanied by two other characters, Victor Von Iron and Dr. Nefarious. With this being a reboot of the entire franchise, we see him in his squishy form instead of being his robotic form that we all come to know and love. PlayStation 4 version, I think, does a really good job of changing up a few things. I love how they completely reimagined the original game while keeping the same story, characters, and so on, but changing a few things, giving us a brand new experience. And I love what they were able to accomplish with it. While everything doesn't really hold a mark, I at least give them props for trying something different. But in terms of which game I think does a better narrative, I'm still gonna have to go with the original PlayStation 2 game. It's just timeless. With it being 17 years old, sorry, just age, age crisis, just give a sec. <sighs> With the game being 17 years old, the script and writing holds up astonishingly well. Every scene is rememberable, the writing itself is great, and plus one thing I love about the game that very rarely games have accomplished is that no matter which character you see, whether they'll be major characters, minor characters, they are all rememberable. I still remember each character and each scene very well, as I think it's perfect. And in my opinion, it's probably one of the best written scripts in all video games. I know that's controversial, but that's just my opinion. I appreciate what the remake does. It holds the basic plot, I love the different changes, and I especially love how they did change a few character mo motivations. With Ratchet in the original, he acts a bit more aggressive, a bit more, gets more angry a bit. Whereas Ratchet in the remake, he's more childlike and has a goal of becoming part of the Galactic Rangers to save galaxies and riding jetpacks and whatnot. And I think it matches well considering Ratchet has changed over time throughout the series and it matches his personality a bit better in the later games. Though even though I do appreciate some of the changes they did and you know, give them props for trying in the remake, there's a few things that I didn't like in terms of writing and characters in the reimagining. For one, some of the newer characters are very forgettable. I barely remember any of the Galactic Rangers' names. And while Victor Von Iron has a great design, his writing and persona isn't really that great or makes him stand out compared to Drek or Nefarious. The voice acting is great overall, but the characters themselves just aren't that great, and there's not many scenes that lay a punch compared to the original. Yes, there are some funny scenes, don't get me wrong, but there are many scenes in the game that aren't as rememberable dialogue-wise as in the original. Plus, there's some dialogue that, I know this is gonna be kinda nitpicky, and don't worry, I understand, but there is one scene in particular that I just do not like. There's a scene where Ratchet talks to the CEO of Gadgetron Industries shortly after you complete the first round of the hoverboard race. Do me a favor. When you use it, post your thoughts on the social medias. The kids love their social medias. Hashtag Gadgetron. I know, it's nitpicking, but just him mentioning the whole hashtag Gadgetron is just... Uh, it's just... I just do not like that one bit. But again, that scene is just a minor nitpick. It does not affect overall that I really do think that the original holds up well, but again, I prefer the PlayStation 2 plot and story structure just a lot more. Presentation-wise, both games are really good. The PlayStation 2 version still looks well, even though some of the environments are looking a little bit dated slowly as time goes on. Character animations are well done, rubbery and bouncy, and everything just looks great. The PlayStation 4 version, however, definitely blows the original out of the water. It is so breathtaking and remarkable. I just love how they were able to take the original worlds and just completely rebuild them. It's simply one of the best looking PlayStation 4 games I've ever seen. Though there's one thing that I didn't really like, and that's during the cutscenes where Ratchet is talking to an NPC. Sometimes it can be dull with the animations. Emotions may not match up to how the character's motives or voice actors goes, and are they even yucking at each other? Like the eye contact between each character it looks like they're not even yucking at each other properly. And the facial expressions aren't exactly that variety. Though there's one thing that I have to give props to. At least they make Captain Croc good and not as 
creepy. I mean, yuck, I don't hate the original model of the PlayStation 2 quirk, but he looks kind of creepy. Between voice actors, they're all tremendable and still great. I still love all the voice actors, even though there are some of the characters in the remake that I don't personally like or I think are really forgettable. I at least give them credit for at least getting some voice actors that are at least trying. And the music itself is great too. Both music tracks, I think, are equal well. There's some music tracks that are more better remembered than others. And even though the re remake has a more cliched film orchestra music, it still performed pretty well. But now you're getting to the gameplay, which is the meat and potatoes of both versions. And they both play pretty well, I have to say. Ratchet and Clank is a platformer, but with weapons. With Ratchet, you can swim and jump around areas, but you can use your Omni Wrench to rack out enemies as well. With this Omni Wrench, you can also use it to screw in loose bolts to open doors and solve puzzles. Clank also has some abilities as well. With the helipad and jetpack upgrades, you can use it to get to higher planes, glide safely down to long reaches, or even long jump. You can even play as Clank in certain areas where he can fit in. In these areas, Clank can use these gadget bots to solve puzzles to enter in these doorways and even take down higher enemies that may be too tough for Clank to handle on his own. But the heart and soul of any Ratchet and Clank game are the weapons. The weapons in the franchise are staple and are so much fun to use. And this game has so many great weapons that I love using, such as the Invisor Bomb, the Tesla Claw, and the Glove of Doom. I just love throwing a little bomb out and seeing those little guys attacking enemies while I'm hiding. Oh, it's so much fun and giddy. Most of the weapons you can get through the Gadgetron vendors, but if you explore around the level, you can find different other weapons throughout, such as the Hydro Displacer and the Trespasser. In fact, that's one thing I love about the game is its exploration. I love exploring around each level because the level design is so much fun. I still love going around for each level discovering secrets. In fact, speaking of secrets, I love discovering gold bolts, as some of them can be hidden pretty sneakily, like you will literally have to take leaps of faith in order to find some of these suckers. And I think the original PlayStation 2 version holds up astonishingly well. It's so much fun to play. Though if I really had to really, really find any flaws, because I think the game is flawless, there are a few things that I guess I do have issues with. For one, comparing that to Gone Commando and Up Your Arsenal is much more slower paced. Then again, the game design wasn't focused on blasting on every single enemy you see. Sometimes moving around can feel a little bit floaty, especially with using wall jumping. Bolts are currency in the Ratchet and Clank series. And in this game, you do find bolts easily, but trying to collect enough bolts to get much more expensive weapons, especially the Rhino, can be very brutally slow. There is a famous bolt glitch in the game you could perform in the original PlayStation 2 game, but at the same time, it kind of loses that challenge a bit. Not saying I don't like performing the glitch, it's fun to do, especially when you're at the end of the game and you want to get the Rhino and you perform it, but again, it's just a grind trying to find those bolts. And even though I love some of the weapons, there's a few that I barely touched at all. Like, yes, there are some cool weapons, but there's some weapons in there that I just did not use because of my center playstyle. Like, I did not touch the decoy glove or the drone device at all in the game. Or even the little headset you get to detect sandomize. I barely used that. And now it's time to talk about the reimagining. And even though I don't, there are some things or aspects of the story and writing that I don't care much for, the gameplay is where it really shines through. It plays very much like the original. Most of the worlds have the same level design. In fact, the gold bolts are in the same hidden spots as in the original. But one thing that I love about the remake is that it combines everything from all the past Ratchet and Clank titles to make this superb game. Gameplay-wise, it plays very similarly to Gun Commando, Up Your Arsenal, and future titles. There is platforming and exploration, but has more focus on action set pieces and taking down a suave of enemies with your weapons. Plus it has shifting in it. Shifting is one of the best mechanics in Ratchet and Clank where you can go side to side shooting at enemies and it's just so much fun, much more fun and has more precise shooting against the enemies. There is shifting in the original but only with the jetpack upgrade you get with Clank and it's not that fun in my opinion. In fact, controller wise, I think the game controls perfectly. Everything just feels tight and responsive. Plus, pressing R1 to do the long jump instead of R1 is X is cute, I have to say. 
plus there's a few control options that make things much more convenient, such as Quick Select. One nitpick that I do have with the original is that with Quick Select, even when you turn it on, you're still vulnerable to enemy attacks. The world around you does not pause, so you're vulnerable to enemy attacks when trying to find a weapon. Plus, having to go back and forth, switching between each weapon or item can be a bit of a chore to bit, especially if you need it a lot. Quick Select is pretty much the same thing as it is with any other Ratchet Clank, where if you're in a very heavily action area, just press and you can pause an area to see which weapon you can use. Plus, there are certain items you don't have to worry about having to Quick Select, such as the Hydro Displacer and Trespasser. Once you see a pad where you can use them, just hit Triangle and you can use them without having to go through Quick Select at all. All the weapons in the game are from the past Ratchet and Clank titles, and all of them are great to use and there's not really a weapon I refuse to use as all of them were really fun. And while you do get a few of the original weapons from the first game, you get some from all the other Ratchet and Clank titles, such as the Pixelizer, Mr. Zircon, and the Buzz Blades. This game also features the weapon and leveling up system, so when you kill more enemies, your weapons will upgrade to more higher, much more powerful weapons as well as upgrading Ratchet's health. Aside from collecting bolts, which is a lot more fun to collect in this game than in the original, you also can find much more rare titanium, which is mentioned only once in the original game. You will find rare titanium for me. No, I will not. With rare titanium, you can use it to upgrade your weapons even more, to have much more better range, carry more ammo, and it's just so much fun. It really makes you more engaged to use all the weapons, so that way you can upgrade them more with the rare titanium and to see the destruction they can cause. Actually, speaking of weapons, let's talk about the Rhino for a sec. The Rhino is the most powerful gun in any Ratchet and Clank game. It is super powerful and is extremely bad A. If Yuni can somehow get her hands on the Rhino, I think she will have a thrill day with it. While I do love the original yuck and feel of the Rhino in the first game, getting it is a chore considering it costs 150,000 bolts and given the fact that collecting bolts is a chore in the original, it can really just, it just takes a while to get it. In the remake, however, getting bolts is a lot more better and much more accessible. There's a merchant in Blackwater City, obviously. However, if you get 9 Rhino Hollow Cards and bring it to him, he'll make it for free. Hollow Cards is a brand new collectible in the game. While gold bolts are in the game, skill points are gone, but you could get Hollow Cards, which are these little cards you get by finding a pack in a certain area or killing enough enemies. Getting these hollow cards are based on characters and areas within the Ratchet & Clank series. Plus, one thing I love about the hollow cards is that if you have duplicates, you can actually trade them in for a brand new card. Which is good in case if you have a huge stack, you can just trade them to find that one you're missing to complete a set. Which can give you an added bonus as in maybe a much more percentage on bolts in an area and so on. I think the gameplay is at its best with the remake. But if I had to say a few nitpicks or stuff I didn't like, I guess there are a few. For one, exploration isn't really that crucial. I mean, you can still explore, but it doesn't feel as big compared to the original game. In fact, the gold bolts are shrunk in half compared to what it was in the original, and are pretty easy to find, especially if you know the original locations from the original PlayStation 2 game. But to be fair, finding all the gold bolts is pretty fun, even though you can find them all in one playthrough. And one thing I like is that once you get it and unlock challenge mode, you can unlock the Insoniac Museum, a staple ever since Going Commando. This is where you can view cut content or see how they were able to do certain effects throughout the Ratchet & Clank series. This Insoniac Museum is a little bit different. It acts more like a rejected or abandoned film storage area, featuring props from the original PlayStation 2 game, as well as many other games from the Ratchet & Clank series. But it is kind of fun exploring around the exhibit, finding small little details and such within each storage facility. Although I guess if I had to choose one major flaw with the remake, it's shorter a little bit. Or to me, it feels a little bit shorter. There are seven worlds in the original that are not in the remake. Now granted, I understand the need to, because since this is a movie-based game, they have to follow the movie. And if a world doesn't have an essential purpose in the movie, it doesn't feel needed to be in the game. But I did notice that there are some worlds that feel like they borrowed elements from other worlds, like they were meshed together. For example, the Battlefield Planet. In the original, it's like this rainy, jungle-like area. 
when the remake is now Snow Planet, combining Planet Hoven, which is where you could shoot down this missile from blowing up the planet. I wish they would have kept the other seven planets as well, but again, since it's following the movie, I can understand the need to. But that's the basic summaries for both these games. And which one do I prefer though? That's um, that's actually very tough for me to do. I love the original for the writing, the story, and the characters, the exploration aspect, and it, it feels a lot more longer than the remake does. On the other hand, the remake looks beautiful, and I love the tight gameplay, and all the weapons in it are so much fun to use. It's really hard for me to choose, though if I really have to choose one, I'll probably have to stick with the original. While it may be slower paced than all the other games, and there's a few small nitpicks I have, I still think this game holds up extremely well, being one of my personal favorite Ratchet & Clank games. Well, my personal favorite is actually Up Your Arsenal, but I still think the original holds a close second in my heart. But that does not mean the remake should get any backlash. There are a few story and character elements that I didn't care too much for, but I appreciate what they did, and I still think the movie is great, and this being a movie-based game, which is a game based on movie. They're making a game based on a hollow film based on my life? This is still a great remake and shows that if you remake a game just right, you can even make it even better possibly. And I do recommend trying both the original and the remake out as they're both spectacular games. And that's all the time we have for today, folks. So if you would like to leave your thoughts on today's game, just comment below. And if you want to get them, both of them are very easy to get. The original PS2 version is cheap. And the, and the PlayStation 4 game is pretty easy to find as well. If somehow you don't have a PlayStation 2 but have a PlayStation 3, there is the Ratchet & Clank collection which has the first three games from the PlayStation 2 remastered in HD, which is also available on the Vita. And hey, after replaying Ratchet & Clank on PlayStation 2, I've actually been wanting to go ahead and replay through the rest of the Ratchet & Clank games on PS2, as well as get the other games in the series, as again, I only played the first Flea, uh, Future, Tools of Destruction, and Crest for Booty, so who knows, maybe I might do a review on all the other Ratchet & Clank games, maybe do a Mega Collection of sorts, probably, I'm not sure, but anyway, let me know what you guys think, which one you love better, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on the next Del Marshall episode, Bye bye